Alright, it shows it's recording for me now. Do you get that? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mind Your Buffalo podcast. Uh, it's a small podcast. It's a small podcast with like a person who's kind of going insane and has an insane audience. And uh, it's really strange for me to invite like, you know, our new guest because she's used to a very, very big platform. Like everything she says and does creates national trends uh, and like big YouTubers uh, want to like, you know, call her on their show and do like a Arnab Goswami style uh, kind of an episode with her. That's not what we do or uh, we are going to do. And uh, very happy and very indebted that um, Dr. Rochika Sharma, uh, who runs her uh, YouTube handle uh, Eyeshadow and Itihas, which, you know, does uh, public history work and uh, very important work in these very uh, troubled times. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rochika, for coming on to the show, this really small show. Like, I, I was very surprised you responded to my message. Usually, you know, I wasn't expecting that reply. So thank you for coming on to the show. No, thank you, Professor Ravikan. Thank you for having me. And it's very um, rare that I get a, a invite from a podcast where we're just like debating as two normal intellectual people uh, rather than, you know, getting like invites from people who just want to prove me wrong. And, you know, so, so I'm kind of glad and uh, that you asked me to come over and uh, very happy to be here. No, intellectual Padani, like, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, my I go by the handle Buffalo Intellectual. So, like, you know, I always tell people that, like, I lean more towards the Buffalo part of it than the intellectual <laughs> part of it. Uh, but um, the reason why I kind of wanted to get you here is also for the audiences, uh, like, if they don't know about uh, your work, like it's it's very important work and you're coming and taking up some uh, very crucial themes about you know uh, historical inaccuracies and political narratives uh, which are being built and you're not really talking about politics you're just talking about history and like that itself then becomes dangerous work what is academic work and um, i was uh, we were talking before uh, we started recording and i was kind of also um, telling you that like whenever I speak to younger students, you know, I teach a lot of undergrad students, um, two subjects students are very like, you know, they hate. One of course is number one is math and the number two is surprisingly always history, right? Mm. So uh, I think that has a lot to do with the way history is taught, the way its relevance is communicated to young people and uh, the kind of work, and I've always been a deep history you know, very deep interest in it, in trying to read about these things. And uh, so I was very fascinated pedagogically from what you were doing and uh, what you're trying to do. And so Mera focus is more on that. Like, I want to really understand your story. Like, why would you do this? You know, this is not something that historians, especially JNU historians are, they're not doing this. Like, you know, the, yeah. the, like I often joke about this, like, you know, JNU, you know, historians, historically, historians, historically, you know, will be heard only in Habitat Center or IIC or, you know, in some of those. Khan so, Market Gang. Khan Market Gang. Khan Market Gang, you know, chai coffee bhi nahi honestly speaking. Ab nahi milti, There was a time. Hmm. Ek acha book, uh, bookstore kam coffee shop. Cafe Turtle, Cafe Turtle. Yes. 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 It was very good. Yes. Huh? Uh, par, and like, you know, every time I go to Delhi, I have these fantasies. I have a little Khan market life. So, you know, I had 200 rupees of coffee. Mein, and I went and I was surprised that there is a blue tokai shokai. Sabhi hai. Like, you know, so I was mm-hmm. like, sab khatam ho gaya hai, you know, in that sense. But coming back to what I was saying is, um, I'm very interested in your journey like why would you pick up history as a subject like take us through that a little bit like and and your approach to this subject like why would you want to come on youtube and talk about these things yeah so since you started uh, talking about you know history not being taught well i'm a product of the system so i got my uh, you know schooling from delhi 
uh, proper NCRT, CBSC education. And uh, initially, it was really bad. The way we were taught history in school was just completely abysmal, you know. Um, so we used to have this method of underlining the important bits from the textbook and then mugging up those underlying parts. And then we would regurgitate, regurgitate in the exams. And my was till class 8, where we had a teacher. And she came in and she said, you cannot study history from one book. Uh, something that I will learn much later is actually very, very true. Um, and then she said that, you know, I am not going to teach you from the textbook. I'm going to lecture you like they do it in colleges and you'll just have to take notes. And initially we were all very flabbergasted. We were like, Kya ho rai? you know, like we're all going to flunk. Um, so, but I was, I was academically a good child, very competitive. And I was like, Theek hai. so I went to the library and, you know, I started looking at other books, etc. And that's when I actually realized how fascinating a subject history is. It was not anything as to what we were being taught in our NCRT books. Mm -hmm. And when I started reading it for myself, it became, you know, almost like an obsession. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating. Um, and there was no looking back after that because I had started, you know, loving history. I mean, in ninth class, I changed school. So ninth class, 10th class, we went back to the whole system of underlining. But I just could never go back to it because, you know, once you've seen, once you've tasted blood, bali bartana. So I just couldn't go back to it. Um, and then I, you know, I had to fight for my, with my family, etc. Because I, I was a good student. I scored 94% in 10th. And you know how Indian schools are. If it's great, if it's 90% above, the certainly engineering. And that's what my parents and even my extended family, you know, you're, you're ruining your career by taking humanities, etc. But the scope hai iska. So I told them that no, Mama, I, I will, you know, like I'm, I like this subject, so I this is what I want to do. Um, and I was actually forced by so there's a compromise that I reached with my mother that um, you know in 11th, 12th you'll also have to study maths additionally. So I did all of that. So I did humanities plus plus maths, and nobody would teach me. Like I had to do like I have to do maths on my own. So differentiation, integration, and I passed, you know, the exam in 12th class. I was only supposed to pass it, but I passed it with distinction on a humble brag. I, I scored 76 out of 100. Um, and I really wanted to, you know, sort of do my uh, history in undergrad as well. Uh, I got through Lady Sri Ram NSR um for history, but my parents then were very adamant that, you know, hai, whatever Jogi School mein kar liya, kar liya. You cannot do this now. And the reason why we got you maths is so that, you know, you can like take pick up a commerce subject or whatever. So they asked me to sit for this entrance exam. I don't know if you know Delhi University, but a famous college, a college of business studies. Um, and they have a flagship course called Black Bachelors of Business Studies. They, they, they sort of market it as a mini MBA or whatever. And the placements are very good. So they asked me to sit for the entrance. And uh, it has a three-step process. There's an entrance, there's a GD, there's an interview. So I was very sure that I would go in one But uh, I had and now I had no excuse to give to my parents. Um, and after that, I studied three years. And in that time, I realized that you know, this is not what I want to do in my life. I really couldn't wait to get back to history. I had gotten placed as well. Um, and uh, it was a really nice initially you know, corporate job. I was 21, you know, very like into the idea that, oh, this is such a high paying job or whatever. But like three, four months, I realized this is just not the work that interests me. I used to get so, you know, so ghastly boring, like number crunch karo and data analysis or whatever. Um, so I quit that. I gave my entrance exam uh, for MA in history and I got through in GNU. Um, and uh, there was no looking back. Then there was MA, MPhil, PhD. Um, during my MPhil, in fact, I would uh, contribute a lot to a lot of these newspapers like Scroll and The Wire, um, News Laundry, Quint, etc. I would constantly write because, you know, once I started Wait, learning... This... I read your, read your old uh, hate rant against Mango. You know, which oh, yeah. Is... <laughs> uh, that's, of course, one which of the things. This period I'm assuming you're talking about. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that's that's the time when I was writing a lot. I mean, mango to hai hi. Wo to matlab is pe bhi pura ek ghanta mein baat kar sakti I have a lot of reasons to hate it. But uh, that's besides the point. You know, just coming back to the history aspect, I've written a lot about history as well. So every time there was, you know, some issue about history which was trending, 
and I had, you know, uh, some two bits of academic history to, to lend. I would sort of write uh, in any one of these newspapers. So tapse tha because, you know, I, so JNU sort of teaches you how to really use your education, right, which is very important for any student to learn. Um, and history is how I make sense of the world, thanks to JNU. So I would always uh, look at the historical aspect of whatever uh, political issue is trending and, you know, see if I could sort of analyze it historically. Um, and that's what I started doing in the newspapers. And then, you know, once this came to a head, uh, you know, I was always wanting to do something like this. And I was teaching in a classroom once. So during COVID times is when I learned how to do eyeshadows, etc. For a dark time with my life. And I used to find doing eyeshadows very uh, therapeutic. And I learned it watching all of these YouTube videos. So once COVID was finished and I was going back to classes, I would put these eyeshadows on and go. And a lot of my, you know, female students were like very impressed with it. And um, they were like, ma'am, you should, you know, start a YouTube channel giving us makeup tutorials. I said, no, I can't. I'm not qualified for that. Um, plus, I just don't believe in the idea of makeup tutorials. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, this student suggested this idea that I should talk about history while doing eye makeup. And I thought that was such a fascinating idea. Um, so 30th April 2022, mein maine pehla episode kiya. <clears throat> it was on Kutub, uh, a monument which is very close to my heart. My childhood uh, was spent, you know, in a house very near to Kutub, Mehruli. So it's always been very close to me. Um, and uske baad, initially, the idea of the channel was that I will just put out interesting new bits of history that people don't know about. But through the comments that I started getting, I realized there were so many myths of history that were swirling about. You know, and that's the that's the biggest drawback of academia. It becomes an you know echo chamber of sorts because when when I'm interacting with just my students who also have a certain degree of knowledge about history, and they're very open to you know sort of learning, etc. At least in my experience, I've only come across students who are very open to learning. Um, so 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 you tend to think, okay, inko to ye aata hoga, and that's how you start looking at the rest of the public as well. But through my YouTube, I actually realized that logo ko bahut kuch nahi pata hai. Um, and then I realized why that is, you know, I, I realized that, you know, I was also like that in school. And these are people who've not learned history in 11th and 12th. These are people who've not learned history in MA and Phil and PhD. So obviously, they would probably, you know, have a very abysmal knowledge of history. We are largely a historically illiterate population. It's taught very badly. Nobody opts for it. Nobody thinks of it as, as something which is worthwhile. So one of the biggest things, one of the biggest challenges for me in the classroom also was to understand, make students understand that history is not just something in the past, but it's constantly, you know, at play in the present as well. And how you can, you know, relate the two. Um, so that's what I started doing in my channel as well. So taking a lot of these myths, you know, Bhakti Khalji, Burning Nalanda, 10 Mughal myths and all of that. And started busting these. And uske um, baato, of course, it sort of, you know, there was a wildfire of, of uh, trolling, etc. A lot of which was initially what difficult tha, but eventually I realized that <clears throat> if I start looking at a lot of this from a research perspective, I'd probably learn a lot more uh, from these because a lot, a lot of these have actually given me, you know, newer myths that are coming up. The WhatsApp market me kya bikra hai abhi as a historical myth and where I can sort of plug in and where I can sort of um, you know put in academic history. That's how it started. And I also think of this as my responsibility as an academic. You know, lagta at least mera mana hai that every academic has a responsibility to give back to the society. Um, if you know so much is being invested in your education, although with the history education mitna nahi hota hai, but still. I think it's only fair that you give a lot of it back. Um, and, and every academic should be doing this, especially when it comes to, say, medicine or history, because these are two which are very often used and misused, especially history when it comes to nation building and all. And medicine because it literally saves lives. So I, I think more and I hope more and more people sort of join this cause because uh, this is very important. It's also their responsibility. Frankly oh, this is fascinating for me because like I come from a first generation learner background, right? So my interest in history peaked because uh, I read like, you know, like me and my elder sister were the first ones to like kind of really do that. So she's elder to me. So her history book, she's six years elder to me. 
So she okay. had like very advanced history textbooks and it was West Bengal board. So it was like big books and all that. And mm -hmm. uh, that's when, like, it's that period, like, you know, the slave dynasty and, you know, all of that. And you're reading about all these names and like, I just like the name Iltutmush a lot, you know, like it's such a exotic sounding name to me. And like, um, I got very interested in that, but uh, mm -hmm. being, you know, abhi, abhi to bahut options a gaya, but tab ko aisa liberal education wagaira nahi tha and male child, mm -hmm. of bhul jao, right? Humanities was not something that was considered, but op option bhi nahi tha Calcutta mein us time mein. Yeah. So, like there was this, like, when I did go to university and I encountered academics, so I mean, my ultimate experience is like academics don't want to engage with people. They actually look down upon that. Now, even yeah. as an academic, now a lot of my colleagues really like you know don't like any sort of public work, even writing op-eds. Like, four years ago, we will write one time, you know, and that will be very obscure or something strange will happen. And any mm. kind of engagement work is sort of looked down as unacademic and not rigorous enough and that so i wanted to kind of ask you this like when you started writing op-eds to begin with right and very interesting editorial choice to mix uh, makeup with history like i think that's very fascinating in a lot of your videos you're doing the makeup while you're talking about it right and um, you know there is obviously a very misogynistic strain of like you know dismissing any kind of makeup or fashion videos that women content creators are especially putting out and to combine yeah. with public work on history so have you been looked at as somebody like oh she's um you know within the academic community whatsapp ki baat nahi kar raha hu aap se bahut log puchte honge but as an academic ki like are there people who are like oh she's not a serious historian wo to youtube mein views le rahi hai rigor nahi hai like do you encounter that? And if you do, how do you deal with that? Hmm. Um, so, you know, uh, before I, by the way, start, because I have said and I can't get it out of my head. His actual name is Altamash. Il yes. is like the anglicize. And I I also used to like Il Tutmish a lot. Uh, in fact, I had a roommate who used to find this, uh, you know, name tongue twister. But when I learned his actual name is Altamash, I used to find that even more, like, nice to speak about you know like i really like the name Altamash. it's one of my one of my favorite names anyway so coming back to you know what you said uh there is a there is a whole idea you know ac academia is like this ivory tower um and you know you're absolutely right they, they tend to look upon look down upon people and, and they think you know public history ka kya hai and all of that and we, we're just too good for it um but and mujhe bahut, uh, initially to the whole makeup thing for me it was just because I liked doing makeup, so I did it. You know, it was something which uh, I really loved. It was a very dil uh, to um, types. And later on, you know, once I started getting this feedback, uh, of course, you know, just from the trolls, etc. And then also from, you know, and I learned this from a third party source that, you know, so and so, who was your peer in JNU, is saying that Ruchika is cheapening academia by adding makeup to her YouTube videos. I'm like, okay, I never thought about it like this. And then I, you know, when I thought about it later, I realized that a lot of this has got to do with the fact that, you know, there there is this typecasting of a serious woman and a non-serious woman. Um, and somehow women always have to do this. You know, they have to invisibilize their body and their face and they have to you know, almost like look like a man to be taken seriously. You know, if you look too much like a woman, you just would not be taken seriously, right? Uh, and I think then my makeup became almost like a political statement. And up to me, I'm very adamant that I will not change. Um, initially, I was also warned when this came from actually, you know, gen genuine quarters of people who were genuinely wanting my message to go across a lot of people. So they said, if you just drop the makeup, Maybe more men will look at it. And I would show them my metrics. You know, YouTube, that way is fascinating. It gives you all these amazing sort of metrics in itself, where study, sociological study of Sakya. So it told me that, you know, at least 97% of my audience is male. So I was like, you know, at least this is not something that I'm losing out on. Men are watching my video far more than women are. That's a different thing. But, uh, you know, so that was never the case. But yes, I have gotten this and even till date, there are a lot of people who would shy away from my work simply because 
and and these are academics you know simply because i put on makeup because they think that somehow this cheapens their academia i don't even know what that means you know just because you're putting it out there for people and you're doing makeup academia kya hai what is it sort of a wallflower or what khatam is snowflake hai kya academia khatam ho jayega mere makeup karne se it's such a ridiculous idea um so, so you know i've i've never given two two thoughts about it uh, but yeah this certainly does exist this idea it is very interesting to know because um, one would imagine like if if i was a professional historian if that's what i like i use history in a lot of my analysis and research and stuff but i'm not a historian historian like i would stop short of calling myself that because i'm not i'm not trained in that but if i was a professional historian i would be thrilled with something like this because it's such a great way of adding to the field adding to the domain bringing new younger audiences and making historical work relevant to contemporary discourse like yeah. if i'm not based on whatever i've seen on youtube you're getting invited mm-hmm. by journalist and contemporary youtubers not actually academic podcasts who are saying you know come and talk so in that sense it's added to the contemporary work and um, mm-hmm. just taking from there itself i wanted to kind of also ask you about your experience of field work in some of your uh, uh, previous uh, interviews you've spoken a little bit about it um, your phd uh, thesis if i'm not wrong is about mandu and like you know the monuments in mandu right uh, correct malwa as a region is one of those regions in india which like you know in the if you're not from there or work there like you mm-hmm. don't have any imagination or understanding of its historical richness so i wanted to ask you like you you said you're a punjabi you're like you know from the north and uh, very strong roots with like you know on the other side with sialkot and uh, you know and so on uh, so why mandu why malwa like how does how how does a historian in you take you there and in this strange chapter of history which is at the periphery of mughal work and gujar pratihar dynasty and so many different mm. other you know it's been a sort of a playground of armies going from all over the mm. place so why 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 that place and what was the experience of doing field work there going and handling these monuments uh, mm. you know engaging with it first hand yeah uh, so before i answer that you know just because you talked about the whole uh, academic thing there there is like there is a small quarter of academics who really you know support the work that i do including the makeup so uh you know just very recently this uh, somebody did a so it was a feminist magazine and they did a piece on you know the work that i was doing and one of my uh, ex colleagues who she's retired now sent it to somebody who's teaching in germany and uh, she sent you know her videos to uh, to my videos to to her students and she wrote back saying that you know this is a very interesting pedagogical uh, start in teaching history that you know ruchika has embarked upon and i really wish her luck and all so that's the first time i actually realized that you know pedagogically bhi matlab koi shift aa raha hai because, and it's kind of I, it's really nice and i'm very grateful to a lot of these comments because it helps me understand my own work a lot more because a lot of the times you just do things and you know you don't understand the kind of import that it's having on, on people in general um so it was nice to see that um and i think somewhere down the line that is why um you know i've chosen locations like mandu and you know for my mphil i did bijapur um so my research interests were always architectural uh, history i absolutely love monuments i love going to them i i relate with them fascinatingly um you know there's there's almost like a bit of a soulmate connection that i have with monuments it's bahut acha lagta hai wahan ja ke um so i always knew that i wanted to you know study uh, architectural uh, history but i didn't want it to do it from the and no no qualms to that i absolutely love art history but you know art history tends to sort of become slightly slightly reductive in the sense that we we're only talking about styles and when it was built and how it was built and all of that but both my mphil and phd have actually uh, used a methodology called buildings archaeology which talks about three f's of a building form function and fabric so just to give you an example delhi mein hai ek uh, monument purana kila ya humayun's tomb ko hi le lijiye so purana kila you know at first was like a palace complex and then shersha when he died uh, humayun came to use it and a lot of the monuments were reused in a different function you know they were not meant for that but humayun decided ki chalo main isko as a observatory use kar lunga isko as a ye use kar lunga so on and so forth 
and then later uh, when the english came in and they were involved in the first world war they turned a lot of the palace area into prison for the japanese uh, pow's prisoners of war um and uh, a lot of these people you know wrote graffiti over there lit fires so what like you know it became a palimpsest of the of the of that time imprints of that time and uske baad phir jab when the partition happened then it got converted into a refugee camp which also had its own imprint but what the british government did after the second world war and what the indian government did after partition is to erase those which is absolutely uh, you know incredulous how can you just erase history it was so so fascinating to you know sort of have all of those marks on purana kila and to understand it for what is it so but anyway so but there are a lot of monuments like that who haven't come under the indian government's ire so they have not been sanitized like that you know and they have those marks you know so that's what i basically look at i look at monuments as a palimpsest and i've tried to do that for both uh, my mphil and uh, uh, phd uh, bijapur i chose because uh, bijapur me you know for the monuments although there is a lot of study like eaton has done on you know sufis etc but there's been no study about the monuments as a as a whole you know, there's no holistic thing looking at all the monuments looking at urban space for example looking at why the city comes up um and how it comes up uh, my focus in fact uh, you know during my mphil was on reuse which is basically uh, so i'm getting a recording error message i'm hoping everything is fine at your end it shows fine on my end okay do we just yes. do we just like i'm not after your other story i'm scared i'll edit this part out do we just stop and restart because i don't yeah, want sure. to yeah all yeah, right please. let me just stop okay, i'll send you the link again it kind of shows why i'm like absolutely not suited for this life why academics should stay away from these kind of things clearly but uh, we're doing our best anyways i think now we are recording technologically to mai bahut noob hu i am very bad at uh, you know like editing my videos i have to get a professional editor. i saw your uh, some of your earlier uh, what do they call thumbnails and it looked like you made it on ppt correct me if i'm wrong yeah 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 i do <laughs> मटीरियल फ्रॉम ओल्ड मोन्यूमेंट्स and uh, uh, a lot of this of course you know are are now contested sites etc a lot of people are talking about it uh, but there is so much of complexity and and layers you know to unpack when you look at a reuse monuments one of my absolute favorite uh, academic interests um, and it's world over you know if you look at for example um, 5th 6th century may you know pagan shrines in rome etc are being reused as christian churches and you know they do something very fascinating like they'll put like these tiny crosses in order to ward off any evil that is already there in the pagan shrine it is very fascinating the way they look at a they understanding the the pagan shrine and the, and the space and they think of it as an evil space and how they are you know sort of sanitizing that space by using these tiny crosses all across the building and how then you know a lot of the building stays the same the only thing is that they install you know um a jesus statue you know him being sort of impaled uh right in the middle right and uh, the rest of the rest of the pagan shrine remains the same so it's it, and you have a lot of these examples uh you know in in the subcontinent as well of course now we only and that's the sad part right we only understand it through a hindu muslim lens and we look at it from conquest but through my study in bijapur and also some somewhat in my study in in mandu as well you know if you look at just reuse there is so much examples of you know one temple being converted into another temple so jain temple being converted into veer shaiva temple and it's more difficult to identify those because usme kya hota hai you don't change the look and feel na temple to temple hai bas andar mein what you'll do is jinna ki murti tod kar jaise for example this has happened in a temple in hallur called megudi temple i had made a video on this as well i had written about it yes 
में तो उसमें उन्होंने जिना की मूर्ति हटाकर वहां पर एक शिवलिंग इरेक्ट कर दिया बाहर में नंदी लगा दिया एवरीथिंग एल्स इज द सेम you know so you can actually see jain goddesses over there you know there's ambika and all of these that you can easily somebody who's good at architectural history who knows iconography you fat fat pata laga lega ki ye jain but the temple looks like a temple so there'll there'll be a garbagriha you know and everything so usme bas aap shivling laga do and what they fascinatingly done is wo jina ki murti jisko tode uske upar bhoot laga diya to this this sacred veer shiva ash and they've kept it right at the central aisle so that people can actually look That this change has happened, you know, or that is actually the conquest bit, which is very important. You know, but a lot of the temples, me, ye bhi nahi hai. It is just very silent, you know, one ek se dusra, and we've finished. So, uh, Dolatabad me hai. There is a temple called Bharat Mata Temple now, but it's actually a 13th century, 14th century mosque, which is reused and made into a Bharat Mata Temple. Kuch nahi kiya. Wo mihrab pe. एक यू नो पिंडली सा लगा दिए हैं बिकॉज लॉट ऑफ गॉडेस इज आर जस्ट डिपिक्टेड विद टू आईज एंड देव स्मियर इट यू नो विद वमिलियन एंड उसको एक चुन्नी से ढक दिया है एक दुपट्टा से ढक दिया है एंड दैट्स इट यू नो दैट बिकम्स योर भारत माता एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द मॉस्क यू कैन सी इट्स वेरी क्लियरली अ मॉस्क राइट इट्स फेसिंग वेस्ट उसमें डोम है पिलर्स हैं एवरीथिंग But you know they they've called it a Bharat Mata temple. So Bharat Mata temple it is. Bharat Mata itself, correct me if I'm wrong, is a uh, only about 120 year old. Yeah, it's it's a 19th century, between 19th century. 19th century, right? Huh. And and this transformation also happens during that time. So this this changing of the mosque into a Bharat Mata temple happens during that time only. Uh, it's it's a fascinating thing. Somebody's written a paper on this as well. I'm forgetting the name. but uh, there is already been a study you know which has been done on this aurangabad to khair kafi study ho chuke anyway so which is why I, i took bijapur because you know not a lot of uh, urban space led studies have happened where where it, you're looking at a large range of monuments what what tends to happen in a lot of uh, art history studies you'll just take one monument and us pe aap ek paper likh doge so but you know i wanted to sort of do a more um and the same you know i could do a lot more uh, in mandu बिकॉज मांडू में तो वो भी रूडिमेंट्री स्टडीज भी नहीं हुई है सो आई हैड अ वेरी फर्स्ट मूवर एडवांटेज ओवर देर एंड आई ऑल्सो गॉट लकी बिकॉज आई कुड फाइंड दिस सोर्स इन इन फारसी इट्स कॉल मासी महमूद शाही दैट्स माई प्राइमरी टेक्स्ट इट हैजन बीन ट्रांसलेटेड इन इंग्लिश इज येट बट इट्स अ फैसिनेटिंग सोर्स एंड एंड द राइटर क्लियरली इज वेरी इंटरेस्टेड इन द आर्किटेक्चरल इंडेवर्स ऑफ दिस वेरी फेमस मांडू रूलर कॉल महमूद खलजी um and you know he's looking at how this person wants to you know bring uh, bring architects from iran and how he is you know creating this very interesting um, visual culture of mandu wherein you have these huge domes you know huge arches right timurid but like beach mein they'll put a chhatri and they'll put like these very ornate designs you know which are very indic and they'll put lotus medallions and all so you can see how he's trying to you know blend these two very interesting facets together and there are a lot of public works as well you know my my latest peer review publication peer review paper uh, looks at this uh, hospital which was built by him um so so far we only know knew of the hospital in the text which is in masire mehmood shahi agar padha hoga kisi ne to usko pata hoga we haven't been able to we were not able to find it you know in one of the buildings where i was able to sort of locate that um and the description you know matches it to a t and what's fascinating is how they're looking at this you know space so they have like there's a there's a separate section and the text also mentions it for mental health patients and then there is a separate section for contagious diseases you know which is like completely cordoned off you can see you know as a pura square sa bana hua hai and uh, you know it's 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 completely cordoned off from the rest of the area so they know the fact that you know contagious disease so we don't want other people to get it you know so they are accordingly sort of making that space and just outside you'll have like these separate hammams for the women for the men and then on on the se- you know second floor on the like top floor the, the there's only one floor the first floor whatever you'll have like eight rooms over here which are dedicated to men eight to women you know so uh, basically admission rooms where they could be admitted and you know operated or jo bhi unko and it's all free of cost so a lot of the land which is next to this area would be dedicated to you know cultivating and then whatever money comes will be going for the upkeep of the hospital nothing is charged from the patients you know so it's it's a very fascinating um, um, space bandu ka to sabse bada uh, urban space ka rule is is water because mandu is on a hill 
and uh, water management techniques are very very important over there because it only rains for i think 3 months and it rains torrentially in fact that's also the touristy bit of mandu mandu gets all its tourism in these 3 monsoon months aur wahi teen months mein i've never gone because you know, feel work nahi hoga too many people half the areas you can't access because you know too much foliage or whatever so you'd rather you know go in these either very winter months or very very summer months um so mandu because wo rain fed pe hi ji raha hai for the longest time abhi bhi hai in fact sadly so you'll have a lot of these bawlis and tanks every monument will have a bawli or a tank you know there's there's no monument without a bawli or a tank uh so it's fascinating how much water management is important and a lot of these are still being you know used and reused so so you know they these have these monuments have a longer life than what we think of and it's fascinating that they can still be used you know um they can still be refurbished and used etc uh jahangir ke samay mein pani ki bahut killat ho gayi thi because a lot of these you know they were somehow weirdly the mughals thought ki humko ye sab bawlis ko dobara chalane ki zarurat nahi they weren't using a lot of it thomas wrote tells us this so you know it was very fascinating so anyway so i've had looked at a lot of this you know um and and why urban spaces because you know i think this is one one of the biggest like you said a lot of urban space historically studies nahi hoti hain um and nobody looks at you know all these monuments put together this is the reason why i wanted the time period to be big because you know there are three definite transformational shifts that i can show one from starting with the paramars and then going to the sultans and then from the sultans going towards the marathas which is where you know my my thing stops my phd stops so there are very three different you know phases that the city goes through and how it's uh you know look and feel changes how its space changes how many monuments change in form and function um uh, how new monuments come up so on and so forth how the city itself comes up because you know mandu was never the city the city was dhar वो जो प्लेन्स पे है इट्स फार मोर एक्सेसिबल वहाँ वाटर का इशू नहीं है स्लाइटली क्लोजर टू द नर्मदा सो सुधार वॉज द थिंग अंडर द पारमार्स एक्सेट्रा बट देन मांडू बिकेम द थिंग एंड वाई इट बिकेम द थिंग दैट इन सेल्फ वॉज अ बिग क्वेश्चन आंसर इन आई पी एच डी सो दीज आर दिंग्स दर आई लुक टच इट्स फैसिनेटिंग बिकॉज आई ऑफन टेल माई स्टूडेंट्स दिस दैट like for a dramatic but i tell them that a city or a space you know is a living thing because a city yeah. is never finished it's never built it is always in the process of being built and mm. while it is developing or being built some parts of it are dying out so neighborhoods and cities rise and fall constantly and then they kind of go through cycles of it so it's very interesting mm. because you're looking at it from a much larger like over you're studying the process over centuries and um, i can't imagine like the excitement of like the hospital you're talking about like you read about it and then you find it and you're the person to do it mm-hmm. like the joy of uh, you know having read something and uncovering it but i kind of want to go back to something that you mentioned which is very fascinating this idea of what happens to monuments what happens to places when we do this right uh, you're mm-hmm. talking about roman pagan shrines um, one of the first conferences that i traveled overseas for was to istanbul and uh, the aya sofia there you know and the, mm. it's so fascinating that this was the biggest church for like you know uh, a thousand years or whatever and then for uh, then the ottomans come and then it becomes like the mosque for 500 years or so on and then you know 1920s like the modern republic of turkey is formed and it becomes a sort of a museum place which is neither a mosque nor a now i think it's gone back and they've re-christened it so this idea of sanitizing history and like you said like you know in the indian government we removed those imprints of history you know mm. which is also like a history of forgetting like you say no this is not leak this is not official history mm. this is of history this is indian history so there is a certification which is going on and i want to kind of go back to that you described this jain temple which is converted to you know a uh, a hindu temple i was teaching in the iim recently one of the iims and uh, i basically teach them social science to management students so that's fun okay. you know yeah. so uh, one of the things i was telling them is that this idea many of them their idea of history is there's a hindu india then there is a muslim india then mm. there is a british india which is a very whatever dismissed pro 
So I was telling them that there was a Buddhist India, you know, and India was Buddhist for a very long time and it had big kingdoms, architecture imprint. And I got a lot of pushback from these otherwise very articulate, very well read, even sort of progressive passing MBAs who are saying, no, no, where are the sources? Where are the sources? What do you mean? How can you say this? Right. And uh, as a historian, I wanted to kind of also get your lens a little bit on, uh, you know, this idea of Buddhist sites, Buddhist caves. Mm -hmm. I think in your, one of your videos, you mentioned this, like in many of your videos, I would imagine, of Buddhist caves being kind of, you know, becoming a site of use and then getting transformed. So, mm -hmm. like, we look back at, like, especially North and West Indian history and, you know, go back beyond the, you know, martial invasions from Central Asia and uh, the West, how much of like, how, how do we make sense of it? Like, you know, do we see it as a Buddhist culture, which has been built over, uh, you know, or what, one of my favorite jokes, by the way, on uh, Twitter uh, is like, Zada mat khojo, khoto. you know, with this whole Babri, you know, Zada mat khoto, Buddha milenge niche, you know, in that kind of a thing. So yes, what is point on, uh, on on some of these things um so you know the the reason why people dismisses where are the sources to do hai ek to pehle humko history nahi padhaya jata hai to humko kya pata kya source kahan hai i am going to bring out a series now uh, on my channel um, which looks at you know all the kings who destroyed temples uh, and my first five examples are all based in kashmir and all of these rulers, somewhere or the other, are also, apart from destroying, of course, Hindu temples themselves, and these are all Hindu rulers, they are, uh, you know, destroying Buddhist viharas as well. And the Kalhans, Raj Tarangini, ek hi source mujhe paanch examples mil So, you know, this idea that where are the sources, there are many sources. I've just looked at one source, and I looked at it very keenly because I wanted to find a lot of examples. So there's Shankar Varman, there is Kshem Gupt, there is Harsha, uh, there is uh, Kalasha, right? So there are so many of these rulers whose only job, and you know, it's it's weird. Kalhan is also, you know, at a loss for words. He doesn't he doesn't know how to explain it. So he says, Ki mati kharab ho gai hai. or he has some bad karma. Also, because you know, Kalhan is sort of um still sort of in in that precipice of you know the turks have not come so they've not brought tariq tradition so there is no cause and effect in history so far and he's also taking from the purana tradition where the purana is in the, the puranas uh where he's talking of divine retribution and all of that right so kalhan was sort of caught in the middle of all of this so he's really trying to do a historical exercise but a lot of the times he'll just not give us the answers because he thinks, oh, it's happening because, you know, this guy is getting karma for that time or this time or his mother was bad or his father was bad. So, his mati or whatever. Right? Um, so, but it's fascinating how many of these are doing this. So, Shem Gupt, you know, what a fascinating, like he's he's one of those, you know, Indian heiress Targaryen. I don't know if anybody sort of read or seen Game of Thrones. This guy just decides because one of his adversaries is hiding in a, in a beautiful uh, and, and fascinating Kalan Raj Tarangini tells us that he Jayendra Bihar bana tha by a Kashmir ruler only, and Jayendra Bihar was his Buddhist monastery. right? And this person, Shema Gupt, he's the husband of a very famous in, uh, Kashmiri queen called uh, Didda. Right? So he comes and his adversary is in Jayendra Bihar. If he is in the Bihar, he will go to the Bihar and he will go to the Bihar and he will go to he decides he's going to burn the entire monastery down just to kill that one person. Pura jala diya wo. Completely like a mad king. Very mad and king. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Very, very drakaris I, I, The only example that comes to my mind is Ares Targaryen. Because that's the kind of thing that he would do. Um, and then he doesn't stop there. He's clearly mad king. So then what he does is, oh, Damari mar gaya, Buddhist monastery bhi jal gayi. So, उसमें अंदर से जो बुद्ध का स्तूप मतलब आइडल है उसको तोड़कर he uses that as foundation stone for a new temple that he builds called Kshemagorishwar and it's a Shiv temple and Kalhan is telling us all of this so this is not me not you मैंने कहीं extra नहीं this is complete primary source based 
you know, complete, ekdam text to text reading. Hai. The only thing that you probably should read between the lines is why he's doing this and all of that. And then you can, you know, sort of uh, bring in your, your ideas as to why, you know, somebody would want to do this to a Buddhist. So there's clearly an idea of conquest. There's clearly an idea of political and religious both. Political, of course, TK Oska adversary, Chupai wants to. But the way the carnage is absolutely unprecedented, you know, like, why are you doing this? There, there are easier ways to clearly, you know, just kill your adversaries. But nobody knows about Shemagot, you know, or examples like, say, King Harsha, who's even worse. So King Harsha does it to temples, you know, which are Hindu temples only, and he does it even worse. So what he does is before, and he's the only person in Indian history, by the way, who's institutionalized temple destruction. Mm -hmm. He appoints an officer called Dev Utpat Nayak, which means uska job hi hai hai, ki usko idol temples ko todna hai. That's his only job. Usko salary tabhi milega agar wo ja ke do mandir todega. So he's not going to get his salary. It's just ridiculous to think of how institutionalized this was. And then uh, Kalhan tells us that not only is he destroying it, he will, you know, break these idols. Uh, wrap them in all sorts of mud, like complete defiling of those statues, you know, and then plunder whatever gold, etc. he can. And wo idols ko ke ke. And he says, you know, there were like streets upon streets strewn with these idols. So, you know, again, absolute carnage. So, kya badla lena tha temples in Mujin bata. And, you know, I am an atheist. But mujhe bhi bura laga for a second, you know, like, why is this? makes no sense why is this happening right um so nobody knows about this nobody knows about king harsha you know nobody knows about kshemakupt it's not because sources nahi hai, it's because we're not taught any of this it's because what we've been taught is basically this idea that you know you said you know the students that you taught have there is a hindu india and hindu india mein ye sab nahi hota tha. muslim india mein ye sab hota hai to hum sirf muslim india mein hi aise examples dekhi so these are 10th century, 9th century, 11th century ke examples. Hai. Obviously, we are not looking for it. So why will we You know, there is this saying that if you get God, you will get a source. Bhi mil na, ye sab ka. And the other reason why people are not able to find it is because they are not letting the monument be the source itself. So this cave that you were talking about, its sara documentation monument is in the cave. In the cave, there are inscriptions hai, which tell us how the shift happened. Cave mein hi wo vihar bhi hai. You know, you can see that there is a Chaitigriha made. And then cave mein hi wo ek Shaiva temple hai and baad mein ek Vitri temple hai. Right? So, if you just let the monument do the talking and you don't sanitize, right? If you don't remove those, those, those signs, the monument itself can be a source. This is what I keep telling all my students that if you're ever doing architectural history, your first source should be looking at the monument. The text should come second. Because, you know, the text is going to cloud whatever you see, you know, in your first few observations. The text can be, uh, you know, a, a sort of a addition to whatever you see in the monument. Great. It can inform you much more. But the monument should be your primary source. We just never let the, the monument do the talking. Because if we let, let it do the talking, it will be very good. sanitization ka idea is a colonial idea. Hai. Because our history is now publicly, colonially, in the mind of the so we we are going to freeze the monument in time we are not going to look at oh it's probably talking of a different era a different function maybe there's a change in fabric we are not going to look at it so monument wahi freeze ho jati hai bas no I, I i find this very interesting because um, my training is in culture studies so i look at social it's i've leaned more towards that and i give my students very similar advice okay, just please do field work you know don't mm. don't go by the sites very often and uh, from what you're saying and I in the disciplines, communications and culture studies and where I've been, I see a massive mediocrity in these disciplines itself because mm. bohat sare scholars ne kaam hi nahi kiya hai, right? They, they've been just there, you know, in these kind of positions where, like you said, like mandu pe kaam nahi hua. Like mm. I, I, I was, today only somebody was, uh, I was talking to someone and I, done a research paper on Mewat in Nu, mm -hmm. in uh, yeah, where I was studying uh, education for, uh, you know, Mewati women and Nu women in that sense, Mayo Muslim mm -hmm. women in that sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were asking me, are there any more literary, uh, literary sources? I was like, when I was doing the research, I was like, 
and this place is like you know uh, 70 kilometers from delhi you know as such and wahi par kaam hi nahi hai there are so many communities and so many spaces matlab mm. historically contemporarily like there's just so little work i don't think academia has even stepped out of that little academy right so in that sense i really like your work but like for like coming like more from the history into this role like how do you see the role of the academic in these times because mm-hmm. let's say the context also many of our uh, audiences um are everyone's culturally and intellectually vapid but like people go to universities they are still doing big business but the university is changing like you know public universities as an ashramification happening private universities a corporatization is happening mm-hmm. and uh, the only sort of lens with which um, the university or education is looked at as like a job placement agency so mm-hmm. social science or humanities bhi agar aap karte ho so as a as an academic you are expected to add value and employability to the student right yeah. ke to itna history sikho itna sociology social science sikho that you can do marketing properly or something of that sort and uh with that coming in you're also and you know a young uh, academic you're an early track researcher in that sense i think you recently got your phd also right uh, congratulations on that by the way Thank and uh, like how do you see you know as an academic developing a career in in these times the role of the university and how does that work out um so you know i think a lot of things first of course is the fact that um, you know the the university itself i think becomes uh, a lot of it i mean if you're not talking of say public universities like say jnu etc a lot of these pri- private university become these very exclusive zones you know sabse bada mujhe kharab baat lagta hai and i've taught you know at both i've taught at private university i've had a stint there and i've uh, certainly taught public universities and i think the biggest uh, 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 problem you know uh, as an academic that i face is that private universities will have a certain class and caste of people and then you know the the classroom shifts is completely changes i would rather teach at a public university you know just because of the fact that you know i will have somebody who's coming from some village and have very interesting experiences a woman say and you know some interesting history to share uh, and then also somebody who's also from delhi you know so matlab wo ek acha ratio ho jata hai ki theek hai you know what i what is this delhi privilege that you talking about hamare yahan to aisa hota hai you know and that's a very fascinating you know um, thing to sort of bring into the classroom etc so it sort of really broadens the horizon of the classroom so sabse bada mujhe to academic ka ye problem lagta hai that you know it's very restricted to a certain caste and class of people and then i as an academic um, you know really have to shift my my teaching style as well you know uh the other of course is you know the, especially when it comes to history there are not a lot of people who are even venturing into the academic space main jaunga hi kyun jab mujhe school mein hi history bakwas padhai jati hai so i think for history the groundwork has to be even more basic because nobody is opting for history after class 10 and class 10th tak bhi whatever they've studied is ki main pass ho jaunga and what is fascinating is now because it's become such a big thing and everybody's talking about it in youtube pe views hain a lot of engineers etc will talk about history and na but unhone kabhi padha nahi hai na so there's a huge gap so then they're talking about whatever wikipedia is telling them or whatever ye bard wagaira jo naye ai aa gayi hai you know very dangerous thing they make up papers etc so that's what they're basically talking about and that's the kind of history that's really going around in the public sphere right which is extremely sad because it's you know it's not history at all it's it's a lot of whatsappery as i call it um but also at the same point of time it's dangerous you know i mean i think as an academic more than anything else uh we should be very aware of the fact that the society is becoming more and more dangerous to live in you know there's a lot of communalization happening and a lot of it at the core of it is history and history which is not taught well so you can actually see india's historical illiteracy at play in 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 a lot of these issues which are coming up and it just very recently you know, the prime minister said oh, non vegetarian and all of that 
and i had to share like i i have shared 10 videos har ek mein there is a different meat which is being there is a tortoise being consumed and then there is a, a you know jackals being consumed and these are kings that are writing about it you know sources proper hai sanskrit sources mein likha hua hai black rats are being consumed there is a chalukyan you know i consider him as uh, my brother in meat loving spirit because jitna usko meat khana pasand hai utna hi mujhe pasand hai Oh, he, and he talks about all these fascinating. He's eating black rats. He's eating tortoises, and he gives us a taste. He says, "Iska taste thode ripe plantain ki tarah hai. Iska taste uski tarah hai." So he's, he's a very he's a good man, you know, as 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 they call it. So he's he's very into this, but we don't have this in the public sphere at all because whatever is being served to us right now is this very dangerously communal idea of history, which talks of a Hindu India and a Muslim India and a Muslim India which corrupted a Hindu India, which is. certainly not how historical historically india was very different idea altogether right um you know the whatever the, the sultans the turks coming in etc pehle to islam comes much in the hindu idea hindu india idea only 780 trade se aata hai you know already matlab bohri parties wagera ban rahi hai jab tak yahan pe tut mein shara hai and all of that so So you know there is a there is a there is a different India in history if you look at it. So I think as an academic, it's very important for academics to step up. एक तो बहुत dangerous हो गया है तो वही अपने आप में खत्म करना बहुत जरूरी है because you see myths तो हमेशा रहेंगे. There is academic history is academic history for a reason and popular history is popular history for a reason. So there will never the the gap will always remain. Right now the problem is the gap is huge. You have to sort of you know try and reduce. It. So whatever myths come out about you know say for example the myth of anarchy is not a dangerous at all. आपको romanticize करने करो भाई. आपको सोचना है जोधा भाई अकबर का बीवी था सोचो भाई मेरे को क्या. मतलब मैं उसको बता दूँगी but वो immediate danger नहीं. Immediate danger ये है कि औरंगजेब ने इतने मंदिर तोड़े तो मैं जाकर you know I will kill a Muslim shopkeeper and I will lynch him because I think I am taking revenge. against orange that i am doing some sort of an intiqam and you know i have uh, uh i'm i'm writing the wrongs of history you know, so it's completely a historical idea orange ne shayad usse zyada mandir ko patronization di hai right and agar orange ne jo bhi aapko lagta hai kharab kiya nobody today is responsible for it so that's another myth that we need to sort of break you know because agar sach mein historical responsibility ki baat hai then so i think the the category of people that really need to get it is the brahmins because the kind of you know crimes that they have committed matlab you know the historical brahmins have committed and abhi bhi kitne ho rahe honge abhi bhi these people think that koi gang hai you know becoming i mean have you looked at the kind of horrible stuff you know the brahmins have done to women to to low caste people it's, it's just to dalits it's it's extremely you know terrible look at manus smriti for example narad smriti you know all of these smritis and shastras सोर्सेस सबके लिए हैं पब्लिक स्फेयर में कोई नहीं है एंड आई थिंक एज एन अकेडमिक इट्स अ ड्यूटी टू ब्रिंग दैट अप सो आई थिंक माय रोल एज एन अकेडमिक इन ऑल ऑफ दिस इज टू बेसिकली ओपन द एनालिस ऑफ हिस्ट्री जो काफी समय से बंधी हुई है चाहे लाइब्रेरीज में हो चाहे मुझे पता हो नहीं पता हो एंड मेरे लिए अपने आप में इट्स अ लर्निंग एक्सरसाइज अ लॉट ऑफ दीज यू नो वेन आई लाइक आई दीज एग्जाम्पल्स आई वॉज टेलिंग अबाउट कश्मीर आई लर्न इट बिकॉज आई आई वॉन्टेड टू सी you know if there are other examples of because i knew about 10 examples but now i know about 20 examples and i'm sure as i go i'll know about 50 examples soon as well right so so that's how basically i see my role as an academic is to basically open uh, academic history to the people at large and i'm i'm hoping more and more people will join this because it's a very important exercise to do no i also want to kind of uh, highlight like you know one of the one of my favorite things about your uh, channel and your work is you consistently highlight uh, you know it's a, it's a very feminist retelling of history you consistently highlight these important women and even like uh, your your the video that i like the most is the one on sati is a long video which you talk about actually events and you you giving the whole uh, narration of it and uh, mm -hmm. in the middle of it you would frequently be like now imagine this from the point of view of the woman imagine she is going there and she is this young and so on and so forth mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's a it's a very powerful way of retelling and reclaiming history uh, because like um, you know the role of women in that sense like the, the way these history books also when i was young i was i would read them like the women would be just explained away or like you know they would just be like mm -hmm. very the sidelines of history 
so yeah you know along with the choice of you know uh, going with makeup like is this a very deliberate thing that you're trying to do trying to bring a uh, you know and and what's the pushback on that like you know uh, i know that a lot of your videos get very misogynistic kind of trolls right yeah. um as someone who looks at like um i study these patterns of these reactions like i'm i'm mm. i'm never really interested in topic you know this animal film i hai mujhe animal mein kya dikhaya ka itna interest nahi i'm very interested how people are reacting to it and you can see some of these patterns so you know like to me a lot of it feels like that if you were not a woman if you were mm. like some white bearded you know like sort of a dada ji looking mm. हाँ मेल एकेडमिक वाइट पीरियड मतलब या आई मीन मेल एकेडमिक और आप ये बोल रहे होते हैं तो शायद शायद पुशबैक होता बट ये जो एक है कि यू नो कनेक्टिंग इट टू योर पर्सनल लाइफ कनेक्टिंग इट टू योर यू नो सेंस ऑफ सेल्फ एंड यू नो दिस दिस आइडिया ऑफ फेमिनिन डेग्रेडेशन व्हिच इज वेरी एविडेंट राइट हाउ मच ऑफ दिस डू यू थिंक कम्स फ्रॉम देर एंड what would you want to say to younger women who might like be very inspired but are also seeing that level of pushback like yeah. theek hai typical pushback aap kar rahe ho wo theek hai main jhel lungi but ye to aap meri personal zindagi mein aa rahe ho meri photos la rahe ho us pe comments kar rahe ho so how would what would you say to younger women of of uh, with that um you know so something that i keep saying is i absolutely love the medium that is youtube you know i think it has really matured me as a person as well ek to sabse pehle i can teach in youtube exactly the way i want to teach you know i don't have to do any uh, academic formalities over there you know if i am talking about sati and if i am bringing an example and if it triggers me in any way i can say that you know i can i can act triggered i can act out of anger uh, and i think that it makes teaching from an academic perspective very humane um so i absolutely admire that about youtube you know it's it's almost like a it's it's a very cathartic exercise for me as well because you know when i read you know a, a lot of these incidents when i for, for example first read the manuskriti and i have this you know 16 verses of the manuskriti i really looked upon i was very very deeply triggered as a woman you know um similarly for the sati thing you know, I was like, "What's going on?" And I brought all of that, all of my angst uh, uh, in in these videos, and I'm I'm kind of glad I did that uh, because it was very important for me as as a woman and as an academic to sort of you know bring that out. Um, I think to be in some way a voice to those women who could never sort of you know get this voice. Uh, and Abibi, what is weird is you know all of these people who've never studied history in a single day, all of these lawyers, etc. Very sad. R W. के पास कोई भी एक proper trained historian नहीं है. कैसे होगा क्या मतलब they don't do history only. Um, they keep saying Sati is a Western construct, etc. And you know I have at least a hundred more examples, and I'm going to bring you know part two, part three of of these as well. अभी तो मैं सिर्फ पच्चीस examples लाई. And the reason why I only brought two examples from the British is because I wanted to break this idea. that somehow the british are the ones who are creating the idea of sati if they are not there are many more examples before that of sati there is there are inscriptions you know there are texts there are eyewitness accounts there are purans that are saying karoge to jaoge heaven mein apne pati ke sath hamesha rahoge tumhara pati heaven mein jayega so on and so forth you know so so there is so it is not just an evil practice there is an institutional religious institutional support to it as well you know there is it it is a it is a religious ideal so and you know look at these sati stones for example there is immense amount of sati so usko to log source ginte hi nahi hai why not each sati stone basically will have a hero jo se thoda lamba banaya jayega chahe real life mein lamba ho na ho and wo sati aise choti si banayi jayegi wo aise haath mein uske haath mein uski khud ki ashes hain by the way you know and wo aise hath kar rahi hogi and these are common across india there are so many sati stones har museum mein aapko mil jayenge by the way people probably don't recognize them all. so you can imagine the amount of sati that has happened agar aapko har dusre 2 3 km mein sati stone mil raha hai so look at the amount of sati that has happened so it's clearly not a western construct at all and you, what you're doing essentially is white washing the crimes against women you know so even when i say it right now also i'm getting so 
you know, like worked up and triggered about this. Um, so that is why I, that is what I love. But of course, the downside of of YouTube, of course, is that you know you are open to all sorts of all sorts of abuse. Um, initially, like I keep saying, initially it was difficult because I was personally really thi. But then later on, I realized that, you know, this has got nothing to do with me. I mean, these are people who are like faceless, nameless blobs. I will never, you know, they, they've never met me in my entire life. I've never met them in my entire life. I have an actual life. I have people that I interact with. So none of this should matter to me. And eventually, none of it did. You know, once you realize that a lot of this is actually projection and it's, it's more... Um, you know, a went for their own insecurities and their own inferiority complex that comes from, oh, this is an educated woman and she thinks she can tell us this. You know, I have, I, it's got nothing to do with me. And, you know, makeup becomes a very easy scapegoat for them. Makeup or JNU, those common. So now for me, it's not a big deal at all. Haan, hai, makeup, you know, you don't like makeup, don't um, So now I, I don't give a lot of space to it because... You know, you've, you've seen this every day, so you become desensitized to it. I no, no longer have that connect. And I get all sorts of it. I get slut shame. They will bring my photos. And it's hilarious. My Instagram is public. I have only put those photos. You bringing that photo on Twitter, you think that is going to deter me. What a, what a great male idea to have. You know, so it's, it's, I mean, it's hilarious. I love those photos. The sharing that and shaming me for it is really not going to, you know, derail the work that I do. But yeah, they try. And, and it's sort of sad we love because they try really hard. I mean, yeah, they are trying is show us your degrees and all. So I said, okay, I'll show you my degrees, but you'll have to take a paid membership for it. Um, then somebody said, no, I'm going to put a court case against you. So I like, okay, then pay the, the lawyer. Then either way, you'll have to pay to see my degree. I'm not going to show it to you for free. So I think. My okay, message how, to he file a court case to see your degree. How does that work? That that I am you know falsely claiming these are are you really expecting logic from an RW troll professor? That is true. That is true. You know, that is true. These are people who think they can force me to show my degrees because they think I'm making a fraud claim ki mere paas teen degrees in history. I'm like, of course. You know, matlab, mujhe agar fraud claim karna bhi hota, why will I do it? Mere paas like something like degree in entire history. इंटरनेट लाइक ऑल स्पेस इज द जेंडर्ड स्पेस एंड यू मस्ट रियलाइज दैट एंड वॉट हैज बीन है are expected to be quiet whenever they face any kind of harassment online you know whether it is i will give give this woman a gali to wo chup ho jayegi or i will you know throw a misogynistic slur or i will invade into her personal space you know uske instagram se photo share kar dunga to wo chup ho jayegi women should realize that that is just an intimidation tactic and bilkul you know you don't have to always be quiet of course that does not mean you go and fight with everybody but if you want to clap back you should you know you should go and 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 you know just just kill them if you want to you know online speaking um and that's what i do a lot of the times i want to reply to them and i reply to them and and i don't uh, you, know, I, you are not advocating for their mass murder you of course just... not no 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 <laughs> no 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 <laughs> no no not at all but i'm not advocating for that at all i'm just saying you know you should women should actually come all gendered spaces can only be taken back by women if they are actively resting it and that will require that you on the internet make your presence felt don't become always quiet about this you know and i see a lot of women doing it you know um, sad hai a lot of women sadly cannot take it unka account wo deactivate kar deti hai and all and i see this a lot for me it's a it's a huge exercise uh this new thing has come up agar kisi ka koi aisa matlab wo kisi ko muslim boyfriend hai to us woman ko bahut wo kar rahe hain uska suspend doxing kar rahe hain and all of that but i see a lot of these women standing up against them as well and saying you know to kya ho gaya to kya kar liya maine and i really like that you know i'm glad that this is coming about and that is exactly the way to be don't let yourself get intimidated
you know no your laws no none of this is going to affect you in the long run tumhara ek photo tumhari public profile se share kar diya it's no big deal and use the medium correctly many women don't know ki twitter pe you cannot share you know pictures of someone else without their consent from another social media platform so we use that i use that jab you know ne mera so i got at least two three accounts suspended because of it you know so that acts as a deterrent you know and tell them that you will file a case etc use the cyber police show them reports etc do it you know push push back and and don't just let this you know slide because we've been letting this slide ye bahut zyada ho gaya hai you know so so this is not something that women should be afraid of they should do it despite this and they should do it because of this also because this is such a gendered space make your presence felt kal ko it will become a less gendered space no right, it's also very uh, i mean to be publicly sort of dragged and cancel i mean we like to say these things but it it really does affect people and i can understand if somebody doesn't want to then like you know be like okay you know what i don't want to deal with this because we don't know what they are going through their life but it's very sort of um you know it's it's relevant what you're saying that you know if you can if you have that space you should kind of push back cuz this is also the other thing to understand in all of this is it's not organic all the people who are who are attacking for instance you or somebody else it's not ke unhone wo subah so ke uthe aapka content dekha and they're like are main itna affected ho gaya it's also a very manufactured thing there is a group there are discourse there are, the machine, yeah. there are yeah. you know sales and things of that nature um you you called it whatsappery like you know i think whatsapp is not the medium it is like reddit and discord and like a both organized tarike se kiya ja raha hai in that sense hmm. but like uh, just like before we wrap up i wanted to kind of like ask you like some like lighter questions you know to kind of wrap up on a because otherwise we've been very at it like i want to ask you like what is your issue with the dodo dodo is a cute bird yaar yeah? like bechari achhi bird thi and uh, use was uh, hunted into extinction and it seems to have become your choice of uh, abuse uh, yeah. directed towards eh? and you always call them dodos that's the only thing every time i see that mere ko thoda dard hota hai like dodo to acha hai yaar ye kyun like so how did you settle upon dodo what has a dodo done to you <laughs> um so the bird has done nothing uh, but the internet dodo has done you know quite a lot of damage to to the country as a whole uh, but uh, you know i used to say dodo generally in in conversational language pehle you know just like just it basically is a byword for somebody who's stupid because there is this idea that dodos were you know stupid, stupid yeah. and then therefore they became extinct although i know that's a myth um yes. abhi idea aaya hai you know that studies have revealed that they are not that stupid you know. Yeah. They, they were they actually fought back pretty much there's yeah. a, there's some myths that this is a stupid bird which let itself get hunted yeah. yeah yeah actually the the really stupid animal is panda i don't know aap kabhi gaye ho china mein gaye ho i've seen them in their habitat they are really stupid i clearly they have to be kept in an environment like this to survive kar sakte hain otherwise kaise karenge in the wild anyway so coming back to the point um but so but pandas are too cute so i'm, I'm never going to use that word so but you know dodo has sort of come in the uh, conversational parlance mere liye to and i used to use it as a stupid thing uh so wahi maine twitter pe use karna shuru kiya and then it caught on uh and a lot of people ab main dodo sa bhi use kar leti hu as an honorific you know sa is an honorific um to a lot of people you know caught on to it as well and ab mere muh pe chad gaya mere us pe chad gaya and dodo for me just means somebody who's like Oh, we need to see merch now we need to see t-shirts saying you know don't be a dodo or something of like that so somebody you know somebody made a beautiful logo also the other day on internet uh, with the dodo and usna matlab aise ek ek male dodo tha jiske chunni nahi thi aur ek ne dupatta liya hua tha and it was so beautifully done and i was like you know this should this should actually be on a t-shirt or by interesting hai uh, but uh, ha maybe i don't know maybe there is a merch or whatever coming but uh, the reason why i sort of call them dodos is also i think because i want to make a distinction between um, people who are academics in doing history and dodos 
who are who have got nothing to do with history uh, and are just you know saying stuff which is not there in academic history at all you know, they're just sort of making up stuff so i think it also becomes easier to sort of and i want that binary to exist because pehle to binary nahi hai na pehle these are the people the donors were the main thing right we are the ones who are now coming up and you know taking that space again you know it's it's a space which has to be taken up uh, and wrested from them and that can only happen by you know telling people that this is what they are that they are uh, people who have no backing in history and they're just saying whatever they want to say and essentially they are therefore dodos so this is the reason uh, you know why i i use that term all right great before we wrap up like your quickly your favorite historical series as a historian um series as in like on youtube or Any series or something like that like i know you like game of thrones you just mentioned harry star oh, yeah yeah oh okay like that oh but that's fantastic right ha huh. so i absolutely love the game of thrones um right. and uh, main itna historical series actually dekhti nahi hu i am more right. into true crime to mujhe true crime puchenge to main bata dungi but uh, game of thrones is one um i also like a lot of historical cinema you know jo ek to produce hue acche produce hue which i liked ek to i really like jodha akbar even though the premise was completely incorrect also, the premise is was... akbar historically inaccurate like was it like yeah yeah massively yeah he shot in kochi and the कौन था इनफैक्ट लॉट ऑफ दीज मुगल रूलर्स बोर्ड उनका सारा पेंटिंग्स में है जो जिसका नहीं भी तोन है वो बनाएंगे नो एट दैट पॉइंट दिस व्हाट आई कीप टेलिंग अभी तो ग्रीक आइडियल हैज बिकम यू नो द मेल आइडियल ना उस समय द मेल आइडियल इज अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ पॉच बिकॉज़ इट शो स्टेटस यू नो सो इट वाज एंड एंड द हैंडल बार बोथ ऑफ व्हिच इज यू नो जस्ट फिनिश्ड आउट बट आई ग्रेक रेको रोमन आइडिया आ गया है ऑफ रिप मेल एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट एनीवे अम सो so of course ritik roshan akbar would be very happy is he's become ritik roshan yeah. now ritik roshan is doing great but um, he shouldn't but he they, should. did, they did they did very well you know like i was i remember i had seen it in the uh, theaters and meta i think ma i feel kari thi kuch kari thi and uh, i saw it and i was really happy with the tidbits that they showed like the way they showed the architecture the way they showed the harem spaces the khaja sara यू नो जो बहुत कम लोगों को पता है हैरम स्पेस का बड़ा इंटेग्रल पार्ट थे वो देवर स्पाइज यू नो फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ दीज विमेन अ लॉट ऑफ कोर्ट इन ट्रीग इज हैपनिंग विद द खाजे सरस एंड दे शो दैट यू नो इन द खाजे सर बिकॉज़ वी टेंड टू थिंक यू नो देयर इज देयर इज नो हिस्ट्री लुकिंग एट दीस ट्रांसजेंडर्स एंड यू नो दीस खाजे सरस एटसेट्रा सो इट वाज फैसिनेटिंग दैट दे मैनेज टू ब्रिंग दैट इन विदाउट टाइप कास्टिंग इट बिकॉज़ पहले यू नो द आईडिया ऑफ समबडी हुज गे और हुज ट्रांस वुड बी कि ओ वी मेक फन ऑफ इट But I think Jodha Akbar really broke ground because they showed Khaja Sarai in a historical light. Nobody was making fun of it. This character called Nimat was was actually very smart and intelligent, and you know, very empathetic towards Jodha and all of that. So it's fascinating. Since you are mentioning Jodha Akbar, Ashutosh Govardhan, okay? Yeah. And you have a big video on Indus Valley Civilization. Yeah, yeah. Not just what do you think about Hindu Daro? not just a video that's what i was coming to so i wrote a piece for scroll uh, where i took apart the trailer so i had actually uh, so it was a big thing at that point in time i think there is a bbc thing also on it uh, with my quote in it um so many twitter pe actually i'd seen a couple of these posters of mohanjodaro and uh, i was like kya peech mein peeche unhone hieroglyphs wagera likhe hue hain i was like this is not the indian script and all so i just took apart that poster and i was like what is this uh dress sorry Professor Avikan, I can't see you. Uh, I don't know if this is still being recorded. Can you see me? Ah, okay, I can see you now. Yeah, I don't know. It just went off for me for some. I know. <laughs> yeah anyway so continuing what i was saying ha so i took about that poster and that tweet got viral etc so scroll reached out to me saying you know trailer aaya hai monjudar ka do you want to review it so i was like sure i'd be happy to review it usme kafi kuch tha to review jo flood myth hai and then they have this whole idea that uh, the harappans then are walking imagine monjudar harappa say they are walking on foot they come to ganga and they start the vedic civilization and i'm like what a ridiculous idea You know, Aryan migration to khata mi kar diya inhone. So Mohanjodar absolutely hated it. Many 
मैंने देखी बाद में बहुत बाद में जाके देखी बट मैं तो ट्रेलर देख के बहुत उगा था यू नो आई थिंक ट्रेलर में जैसे क्रोकोडाइल्स जंपिंग अप एंड डाउन और समथिंग ऑफ दैट सॉर्ट रोमन अरीनास है रोमन अरीनास कहां मिले हमें अरबन में इतना कुछ मिला है अरबन सिविलाइजेशन के लिए व्हाई डू दे डू दिस व्हाई डू दे हैव टू शो रोमन अरीना भाई मुझे सबसे बात बताओ कि कॉल्ड मोहिंजोदारो इटसेल्फ राइट There's a short where he says, "Is Sheher Mohinjodaro se mera?" I was like, "That's not the name. That's what Mount we call it." Mount of the Dead. No, but that's what we call it now. We don't know what they called it, right? Why to? Mohinjodaro means Mount of the Dead. Why would a city call themselves Mount of the Dead? What a ridiculous idea! So, why that in itself? And then, in their costumes, you know, one thing that Harappans have left us is so much of terracotta art. So, unka tum costume to sahi se. एक तो ये था हाई स्लिट ऐसे कोई लुई विटोन से मतलब हरप्पन सिविलाइजेशन में ड्रेस आ रहा है रिक्रिएटेड ना मेहनत करो थोड़ा बट यू नो आशुतोष गोवारेकर जोदाक पर वॉज गुड आई नो दिस बिकॉज माई पी एच डी एम फिल गाइड वॉज पार्ट ऑफ द एडवाइजरी कमिटी तो दे एक्चुअली ब्रॉट इन पीपल फ्रॉम जे एन यू एंड आस्ट की यू नो वॉट कैन बी शो लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल दैट होल सीन विद अधम खान हाउ अधम खान डाइड उन्होंने एग्जैक्टली exactly वैसे दिखाया जो वो पेंटिंग में दिखाया गया है अदम खान डाइंग यू नो हिम इन इन मोशन इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल मुगल पेंटिंग इट्स अ पेंटिंग व्हिच एक्चुअली ट्राइज टू कैप्चर द मोशन सो ही इज मिड फ्लाइट अदम खान हैज बीन पुश्ड बाय अकबर फ्रॉम द टॉप या या एंड एंड यू कैन ऑलमोस्ट सी यू नो हिज नेक इज अबाउट टू टच एंड यू नो गेट स्नैप्ड एंड दैट्स व्हाई यू नो ही इवेंचुअली डाइड so so that that entire scene was done very well you know in in jodha akbar so there was a lot of stuff that jodha akbar did well and also this this idea of cosmopolitanism that you find in so many of akbar's endeavors not just in his akbar nama wo to hai abul fazl is back to look quint about you know how secular i mean quote and quote secular his master is and how much he loves him because of this but also you know jo uska fatehpur sikri architecture mein dikhta hai uska cosmopolitan nobility mein dikhta hai you know rajputs bhi aa rahe hain and then shias bhi aa rahe hain and then sunnis bhi aa rahe hain jahangir says mere papa ke time mein mosque mein shia and sunni can pray together so all of this you know comes together bahut acche se jodak par mein so i thought jodak par was very well done despite the fact that its whole premise is flawed Jodha was probably not the name of the Rajput queen who birthed Jahangir. Maria Muzamani is the title, which is certainly Rajput. But we don't know what his name was and all of that. So, he was in his own way, but it was a very well done movie. Mughal-e Azam, I thought it was very good. Again, Anarkali is a very big myth. 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 इंग्लिश ही सबसे पहले आके लिख रहे हैं उसके बारे में तो यू नो सो बट बट इट वाज सो वेल डन इट रियली ब्रॉट द एसेंस ऑफ दैट टाइम पीरियड यू नो सो सो आई आई रियली लाइक दिस कपल ऑफ दिस मूवीज बट मोहिंदर ऑफ कोर्स आई एब्सोल्युटली हेटेड बिकॉज़ वही वो एसेंस नहीं है ना टाइम पीरियड का वो आप टाइम पीरियड से हटा दोगे मॉडर्न चीज बना दोगे तो वैसी मूवी बना लो यार लाइक आई फेल्ट दिस समथिंग सिमिलर आई डोंट नो इफ यू सीन द शाहरुख मूवी अशोका मैंने नहीं देखी आई ट्राइड वॉचिंग इट मैं आधा घंटा में बंद कर दी बोरिंग मुझे दो साल हो गए हैं a shaman for 2 years now which means i have been a buddhist for 2 years now and uh, you know mai pehle do peacock aur you know ek uh, wo khata tha what is that other anyway so you know i used to eat three animals pehle yahan par zaba hote the matlab mere he doesn't use the word zaba i mean in my kitchen and then ab is just one peacock in one so i have you know from three i've come down to two So, you know, I like the way you know he when he is writing about him his his own journey of becoming a Buddhist and you know taking to non-violence etc. He's he's not a king anymore. He's just a Buddhist lay person, and he describes his gradual evolutionary journey. He comes across as a fascinating person. Can't believe India has just not been able to do that justice. On I would love to see a series of Ashoka, with his inscriptions, with all these interesting texts. You know, yeah, Ashoka Vadana etc. उसको बीच में डालो इंस्क्रिप्शन डालो उसकी शो दैट ग्रेजुअल यू नो चेंज फ्रॉम हिम बींग नॉट अ बुद्धिस एंड देन बुद्धिस एंड वॉट चेंजेस डज ही ब्रिंग डज ही यू नो कम्प्लीटली बिकम नॉन वायलेंट बिकॉज वी नो ही ड्रिंग ही जस्ट एडवोकेट्स फॉर लाइट अ पनिशमेंट बिकॉज इज अंग एट दी एंड ऑफ द डे नो एंड देन वॉट हैपन्स टू हिस प्रोजनी राइट 
So Jaloka, etc., become Shaivites, and then they right. attack a lot of Buddhist stupas. We have documentation for that as well. Which is a very interesting thing. I said, "Dekhna, but look, karte nahi." All right, uh, I've taken a lot more of your time than I thought because just very fascinating conversation. and uh, i think there is uh, a lot of like minded understanding of history so and as academics so mujhe to bahut acha laga i hope you know this was a worthwhile way of, of for you to spend an afternoon thank you for your time and uh, you know just like thank you for showing up you know in lessons no, thank you so much thank you so much for inviting me i had a great time uh, and i really love talking about history to I'm always open I hope he, I hope he inspired some you know young budding historians cuz I really you know, hope he needs it uh, at least our movies will be better you know so at least oh, our yes. movies will be more accurate yes hope uh, it like so all right thank you dr ruchika and i'll just stop the recording right if you like this episode please consider um following me on patreon uh where i do a second show a small half an hour on um the weekly news and things of that nature the absurdities and the surreal stuff which is happening around uh if you don't really if you've had enough of me and if you don't want to listen to me that much i completely understand i can't tolerate myself in that case i would would request you to go to buy me a coffee and please like support me or you can just keep listening to my free shit i don't mind thank you very much jabim see you all